When I was 13 years old, I was too young to get a worker's permit, so instead, I started my own business. <laughs> Using my dad's old lawnmower, I'd cut my neighbor's lawns once per week. At the time, I was just tall enough to reach the handles of my dad's old lawnmower, and I was just strong enough to push it across my neighbor's lawns. While I was full of big ambition, I really was the owner of just a small lawn business. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests, when I set out to start my lawn service business, I dreamed big. But my piggy bank was small. I dreamed of buying a whole bunch of brand new equipment and having my friends all partake in the business. We'd corner the market in our town and we'd make truck fulls of cash and I'd be able to retire by the time I was done with high school. <laughs> but soon, I realized the gravity of my situation. I was only 13 years old. The only collateral I had was my baseball card collection, and the only credit I could get was around $5 per week, the cost of my allowance, assuming I did all my chores. But it wasn't until my parents turned me down from a new business loan to buy a new lawnmower that I realized that my lawn service startup was caught in the weeds. But I didn't let it phase me because I still had my dad's old lawnmower. And it was dusty and rusty, but it still worked. So I made a bunch of flyers and I brought them door to door across the neighborhood. Knocked on doors, rung doorbells. Finally, the calls started coming in. I treated my home answering machine like my own personal business one, fast forwarding through grandma's old voicemails, <laughs> trying to get to the details of my new lawn jobs. Soon, I was getting too many voicemails that I needed to get some help. The first friend that I hired was Jared. What made Jared qualified was the fact that, well, he had a brand new mower in his garage. <laughs> and yeah, he was a good friend of mine, and we were next door neighbors, and we hung out all the time, but this mower, this mower was something special. <laughs> The next people I hired were Bob and Bill, as you could probably guess, twins, but both uh, friends of Jared and I. As you'd imagine, twins, they would share a lot in common. Well, unluckily for me, they shared the same distaste for manual labor. <laughs> the very first job they showed up saying, David, how many vacation days do we get? <laughs> if it couldn't get any worse. <laughs> Once I got a call from a woman, <coughs> David, you know, there's twin brothers racing lawnmowers in my front yard. <laughs> so I had to put a stop to that. And if things couldn't get any worse, Jared came to me with his very first occupational grievance. David, I can't mow lawns anymore. Jared. What, what do you mean you can't mow lawns anymore? I hired you. We got calls. We got a lot of work to do. What do, what do you mean? Why can't you mow lawns anymore? Well, you see, David, see, I'm allergic to grass. <laughs> <laughs> allergic to grass? What are you talking about? How could this be? How could you not tell me? Well, see, it never really came up in the interview. <laughs> Clearly, I didn't hire the right people, and soon I found myself struggling between being a successful businessman and being a loyal friend. So there I was, just a little boy with big ambition, and this time, the ambition just fell short. So I was depressed. I ran home. I had a conversation with my dad. We both decided that I should probably move on to some different things. He said something really profound to me right after that I remember. And he said, David, you could always mow my lawn. <laughs> and I said, Dad, thank you. 
and I love you. But you know, I have a lot of vacation days saved up. <laughs> Maybe next year. Mr. Postmaster.